Let's do this. Welcome to our first video class. Us, Wonder Bath. There's Mina Park. Hello, hello. Danny Ferris. What's going on? This podcast. We're all in Southern California, but just too lazy to meet up. Uh-huh. Thank you, technology. I don't want to waste my gas, my parents' gas money, so I'm unemployed. It's true. Gas right. is very expensive. Yeah. So welcome. It is. So, uh, it's our first podcast. Don't know how this is going to turn out. Hopefully, it comes out great. Uh, it kind of relies on who actually listens to this and the stuff that Which, we're Which, from the view counts of our last couple videos, is not much, but not- it's <laughs> it's probably a big portion has to deal with the fact that Danny was not in those videos. And a lot of the girls probably saw that and just didn't want to watch it. Sorry, Ricardo, but... That's not. That's not right. <laughs> I, I've been doing a lot of squats, a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of lifting. Do you even it's lift? true. Do you even lift, bro? Like, he's, he's speechless right now. He's not even... There you go. I'm trying to figure this the whole setup out. Since my computer is getting hot, and... The HD is going to get worse than it already is. Your, like, thighs are slowly sweating already. <laughs> I think your computer is just uh, fixated on the fact that it's on your hot body, and it just can't. You it's, gotta it's put, on a pillow. Yeah, you got to put the pillow. Um, I need to get one of those fans, one of those nerd fans that sticks underneath your laptop. You guys seen this? Yeah. Need one. Next time. Next time. Next time. But anyways, we've all been really busy, right? Which is why we haven't been producing as much lately. Um, I think from the get-go, when we were all unemployed, we tried to do a video a week, which we did for like six straight weeks, which is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, But then, ironically, right when the season started, we just fell off the the planet uh, a little bit, which is kind of ironic for a baseball blog, so we kind of dropped the ball on that, so sorry. Part because both of you guys got jobs involved in sports, so there's that. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we've been working in sports, just not on the blog. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and Danny's been it's just so hard to reach. <laughs> <laughs> I've been busy. Been the busiest one out of all of us. By the way, Mina, is your dog all right behind you? What's he doing? Oh yeah, he's sleeping. Oh, he looks. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> I mean, just look it's at not, it. It's not the most attractive angle, um, <laughs> well, but he's just chilling. Legs. Uh, dog buttholes. You can send us those uh, pictures at the Wonder Bat. Send your favorite dog oh. butthole to the Wonder Bat. This is hard dog to do. It. You know what? It's probably because he had a uh, thrilling weekend. That's oh, yeah. Knocked out. Look at that segue. Thrilling That's weekend. Yeah, it's a weekend recap. So what what have you guys been up to? Um, I thought Dan, or, sorry, I thought Ricardo was dead um, yeah, this weekend. Ricardo was gone. Uh, got off the grid for a bit. Went camping up in Idlewild. That was cool. Uh, didn't yeah, and he didn't he didn't tell anyone. He was leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just took off. I just did not tell anyone. I was like texting them because we text like that's our main form of communication, but. I was texting. I was like, Ricardo, what are, what are you doing? Are we skating this weekend? Like, are we filming? Whatever. And it was just, like, dead silent. And if you know Ricardo, he's, like, always on Twitter. I checked your Twitter, too. Checked your Facebook. I was like, oh, my gosh, he might be dead. And so I, <laughs> I texted, like, are you alive? And then I didn't hear anything until the next day. But so I'm glad you're alive. Did you have fun? Camping? Yeah, it was fun. There was uh... – like a near-death experience. There's like a boulder up in this uh, this area that we were camping at. And I swear to God, I thought I was like topple over. Like gravity's not my friend at all. So climbing this thing was, uh, was very terrifying. Plus, I'm terrified of heights. So like being up there, my legs were all wobbly and stuff. It was not fun. But you got, you got awesome pictures though. Yeah, the pictures came out great. I just like, if you guys saw me, you guys would have laughed your ass off. It was terrifying. <laughs> So Danny, you flew uh, you flew out of state, my friend. Yeah, I was just traveling across the country. Went to Cleveland, went to a couple Indians games, and I went on Friday night was the busier one. Um, actually, I don't know. They're pretty comparable. On Saturday, they had the Brohio bobblehead. The place was packed for them. Brohio bobblehead. Did you see it? Have you seen it? 
I think, I mean, I don't, is it him, like, playing flip cup or something, or what? Do you have it? Do you have it with you? Did you get one? No, I, we didn't get one, because they had a limited amount, and, like, people were lining up, they weren't super, super quick, but, um, yeah, we tried, like, searching, like, the stands for them, but we didn't find any there, but on Friday night, we went to the game, and there were honestly more Johnny Manziel Browns jerseys and, like, t-shirts than there were, like, Indians players t-shirts. Oh, that's It was ridiculous sad. in jerseys. So that was pretty cool. Were people wearing... That's crazy. Were people wearing their LeBron James jerseys back in the... No. <laughs> old school cap. It was, it was kind of weird, though. I did go to the, uh, the team store, and they were selling Cavaliers jerseys, like Kyrie Irving. Uh, Wait, in the Indian store? Indian's team store, yeah. They were selling Cavs jerseys. You know, with, when they won that, the NBA lottery, you know, fans yeah. got excited again. It's got to make money. That's what's cool about going to different parks. You see different things, and you're just like, what the hell is going to happen here? <laughs> the bad business decisions that's going on. <laughs> just what, a little you, what did you do? Sorry, say that again? So what did you do this weekend? Me? Well, my weekend is still my weekend, technically. Um, so I'm doing this. Uh, I work Tuesdays through Saturdays, so I have, like, a weird weekend. But, um... What do I do? I didn't really do much. I'm obviously at my sister's place. Is that nice dog? I, I, I don't know if that's your sister's place or not. I haven't been to your place or the other place. This is uh, my weekend. Oh, yeah, the dog. Sorry. The, I guess the summary. <laughs> it, it doesn't um, look like... It looks weird when you're... The hand position, where was that? Looked awkward. Was it? Was it off? Well, it, looked, it looked like you had your finger up his butt. It was kind of Oh, gross. did I? I'm petting him. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> so dumb. Where's the baby? Uh, the baby's downstairs. I think he's sleeping. But basically, I just been hanging out with my sister and my nephew, and just trying to sleep in as much as possible. Really, this is my weekends. Yeah, we have crazy like work hours. Yeah, I work and nights. Um, I work on a show called Fox Sports Live. Shameless plug. If you guys want to watch it? Follow um, on Twitter. It's on Fox Sports 1, the one for fun, hashtag. Um, yeah, I work like 3 o'clock to like midnight, so I have weird sleeping schedules. But it's nice to uh, come down here and help out my sister and hang out with you guys every now and then. Uh, I don't really like hanging out with you. Oh, yeah, and we started <laughs> a skate. Okay, so we started a skate crew, uh, which I kind of mentioned earlier. Because I was texting Ricardo, like, when are we going to skate this weekend? And then he never responded and d- almost died. But uh, Memorial Day, we went, we all played catch together in the park. And then Ricardo and I went to go buy some skateboards. Just because we've been talking about getting skateboards for some reason for like a really long time. Months. Again, yeah. that's awkward. I can't do that. There's right there. Wait. It's near the <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Mine's in my car right now. But uh, so we've got skateboards, and basically, I'm trying to learn how to ollie. That's like my bucket list. Once I know how to ollie, I'm pretty much done with skateboarding. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to skate next weekend, and then uh, try to film that because it might be hilarious. It'll be the worst skating video ever. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, when are you getting your skateboard? What's going on? When I, whenever I can afford one, I don't know. Taking Wait, Danny. Trips to Cleveland saps the count, huh? Danny, what happened to the skateboard we got from the fan cave? I left it there. Oh. Yeah, because I, I couldn't like story? I couldn't fit in a bag, and I didn't want to send it home. But I left it for uh, anybody in the fan cave that's watching. They probably cleared it out, but I left it in the upstairs bathroom, like that <laughs> door next to the toilet. There's a. Uh, it was where Mr. Met was like the, the scuba guy. You know what I'm talking That's about? That's like the worst place to leave. I didn't know where, where to put it, so I put it in there. <laughs> how, are they, I, how are they supposed to find that? I, don't, I'm, I was hoping that like John or Adam would like clean that, like the take down the Mr. Met thing, and then see it in there and be like, huh. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I guarantee you Duff like, found it like right away, like the, the day after everything was done. He, he probably it. smelt it, and it was like, there's something wrong here. I need to go find out. <laughs> the yeah. man has a keen uh, sense of smell. 
That didn't no. that didn't work out so well. We got we bought a skateboard last year in the fan cave, but we just bought the deck without um, trucks or wheels, and we're like, oh, this will be fun because the fan cave has a lot of like carpet. So we're like, we'll, we can just slide around, um, kind of like a snowboard, but without the trucks or wheels, it's very hard to do any tricks. <laughs> with yeah, the there's deck. no leverage. So yeah. With that attitude, you guys. With that attitude. I know. So we ended up just using it like as a exercise tool. Like weren't you doing like abs? Like doing some yeah. kind of abs workout? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, abs workout with the skateboard deck? Like you hold yeah, the your hands on the deck and, and then like push it up. Come back in. Kinda of like planking but like you're sliding. But yeah, so that was kind of a fail. I like how you guys were like uh, super athletic, like exercise this and that. You guys actually did the the five K and then our season, we didn't do any of that. Like, none of us worked out, except for maybe Kyle. I don't I know mean, if you can call me running the 5K, running the 5K. It yeah. was just brutal. It was it was tough. I mean, Travis threw up all over the place. That's yeah. my, that's my, I have to my all-time favorite picture of anybody is Travis throwing up. Oh, yeah. I think it's still his, it's profile picture, right, on Facebook? I don't know. As it should be, but it was, yeah, it was bad. Like, I, we had, like, three hours of sleep that day, and then we ate, like, pizza the night before, and so it was just, miser- <laughs> it was miserable. Um, but, you know, it was for charity, <laughs> and it was a throwing good experience. Up for charity? You know, <laughs> we're throwing up for charity. And, so what do you guys, um, do you guys, like, miss the fan cave at all, or not really? Uh, I mean... It's nice that uh, that we did it definitely, but I like I like where I'm at now. Jobs I got. So what do you do, Danny? Tell tell the people what you do. Post fan cave talk. Um, <laughs> I have a variety of jobs. One is with Fox Sports, but not with Mina. Foxsports.com. Um, I work remotely and I create newsletters for various MLB teams. And then I also um, have a split internship with the Angels doing PR, and then that's half the games. The other half of the games I work for MLB.com as a real-time correspondent at -hmm. Angel Stadium, taking pictures, the man on the scene. So if you see pictures on, like, the MLB Instagram um, of at Angels Park, it's most likely me or the other guy that... that, um, that's Swiss games with me, so. That's awesome. That's what you're I do. like. You're basically the hardest working man in California, besides Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> I <laughs> wish. I wish I was. You're as like hard dabbling in. The, yeah, you're dabbling in a little bit of everything in sports, but. Uh, so yeah, so whenever Danny, whenever the Angels are in town for home games, we never see Danny because he's always working. Um, so it's always nice when the angels go away for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not for too long, though. It gets super boring when they're gone. Oh. And right now they're losing it. It's not fun. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. I'm glad I got away for the weekend and did not see that series. That was, that was sad. Eight. Same. I, I, didn't watch it. I didn't really watch any games. I couldn't. Went to the bar and asked, but they didn't have the channel. But it's kind of sad because, I mean, one of our topic bars is the AL West, so we're going to have to talk about it eventually. <laughs> no, I'm not going to talk we, about we it. Skim, we can skim. We can skim over it. We can just delete that because um, I don't, I mean, the Rangers. Maybe we should just change it to AL East so whenever April comes in, she can brag about the Blue Jays. Can we just, like, make fun of the A's for, like, five hours? Just have, like, a five-hour podcast and just crack jokes to that team? <laughs> anyone, anyone with me on that one? No. The A's. They're good. I don't get it. So we've got April Weitzman trying to join in. Um, I'm talking to her right now. She's in Toronto. Um, she's having some difficulties getting in, which Danny experienced. So I'm trying to see if she. She probably needs a passport since she's coming in. <laughs> I uh, get it. Uh, I get Answer it. Customs. That was, that was, so it might take some time. This is terrible. We um, should do a little fantasy update. 
We should, and I am. I think I'm still tenth out of ten. So. <laughs> I, I think I played one of you guys. There's no way I'm being here. There's no way. No, I've been last for the whole season. I think. Um, I'm looking it up right now. I think I'm. I'm playing you, Ricardo. I think this week. Oh, so I should actually look at my thing. By the way, just to fill some time, I want to congratulate my friend Jesse Hahn. Got called up for the Padres tomorrow. He's starting. Oh, He's starting. Remember, uh, we saw him pitch in Arizona. We did. Yeah, 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 against the Rangers, right? Yeah. What was his uh, record in the minors? I don't know. It, they did a they did a like a piggyback start type thing to start the year. So he started the year like out of the pen, piggybacking off of uh, another starter. So he did like three innings, and then um, they bumped up his pitch count. And eventually, he started starting games himself, and then. I think he got up to 75 pitches his last start. And I uh, thought he was big league ready, so it's pretty cool. Awesome. Well, hopefully he doesn't big league you. I don't know. That, one, that yeah. would be fun. <laughs> hey, Ricardo. I'm not on that of the fantasy standings. I'm in dead last. Oh, My record man. is 28 and 57. Oh, you are last. Yeah, Mina, what are you? You're stealing first? What, for a fantasy? Yeah. No, I'm like ninth probably then. If you're 10. What's your team name? Oh, sorry about it. Yeah, you're you're right above me. Yes. <laughs> oh man, Ricardo, I, I beat you 10 nothing last week. I'm looking at the uh, the fantasy league right now. And there's a trophy assigned to Ricardo for the worst loss of the year. It's not good. <laughs> Awarded to the team who loses by largest margin each each season. Let's talk about that now. You guys been watching college baseball? Been good. I only saw the uh, softball game. Oh, look at that! Oh, that softball game the other day was great. On Saturday, did you watch that? Was that I the Baylor one? Alabama and Oregon. Well, Alabama, Oregon. I forgot. I think it's like Kentucky. Somebody. And they came back from like seven down. The last two innings, the win it was pretty awesome. But why do they grunt when they pitch? That's what I couldn't get out of my head. A lot of aggression. Like, every time she would, like, wind up and go, she would, like, screech. I don't know. I wasn't a fan of it. I wasn't a fan at all. I guess if you do it once, you got to do it every time, or else you start tipping pitches. I can't even pitch. Or maybe, maybe, they, maybe they don't. Maybe they do it, like, just sometimes. So it's like uh, you think, like, a fastball's coming, but it's a changeup, but then they'll throw a changeup and grunt. You know what I mean? If she grunts and it goes to this decibel, it definitely means it's a changeup. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. Hey, we got her. Hey. hey. Oh, my gosh. April. That worked. That worked. The link worked? Yeah, it worked. Oh, Why cool. Google? Uh, That's what you got to do every time. Man. We were talking about how bad Google was um, before you joined. <laughs> uh, so, sorry. I don't know why you wouldn't get the invitation. It's just naturally, like, through. Your... Canada. Oh yeah, maybe it was the custom. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Well, Mina, you want to do the introduction? Let's do this. Okay. Well, drum roll. This is April Weissman, uh, Canada's own. <laughs> um, she's joining us on the East Coast right now, Eastern Time. And where are you right now? Are you at home? Yeah, I'm at home right now. I just finished work, so. Nice. Blue Jays. Oh off. yeah, forget the little. Little time difference. Yeah, so you're already done with work. Um, Did and you say, uh, she's in the East Coast, though. Well, she's, she's in the East, East Coast time zone. East Coast time zone. Sorry. Let's clarify Badger. that she's Badger. not in she's not in Halifax, right? Yeah. That's the East Coast, right? Yeah, that's right. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's not in Halifax. She's a little bit west of that, but she is on the East Coast time. Um, and she was in the fan cave with me and Danny last year, which you probably already know because she was the most famous one <laughs> in our year. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you guys. I miss you guys. Yeah. So it's, it's great to be. Forever. We miss you too. Too long. Yeah, so update us. What's going on in your life? What's happening? Okay. You know, we, last year we thought baseball consumed our lives. Well, baseball still consumes my life, so I haven't missed a game yet. So wow, 
Yeah. I don't know. I always see pictures of you there. You're either like on the field or just like up and like awesome seats. Yeah, you're like different spots every time you post a picture. <laughs> I do have season seats in the 500 level, but uh, oftentimes I have friends or somebody who invites me to go do something else. So it's been a heck of a season so far. Don't know where uh, the yeah. season of this year was last year, but uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So yeah. Yeah, I was I was gonna say like how. How badly do you want to be in the fan cave this year now that yeah. the Blue Jays are winning? Yeah. No, I'm I, sure, yeah, there, last year yeah, wasn't. It was tough. Yeah, sure. I know. <laughs> there were uh, many times. I mean, I think for all of us in the fan cave last year, because none of our teams made it um, to the postseason in terms of, well. You sort of made it. You had one game there. Yeah, but we had a lot of like ups and downs in terms of like our teams. And so there were a lot of times in the cave when we were all like pissed off or like breaking down, which, which I think people don't know, you know, cause like, you know, we just post pictures generally of us being happy or like, we're not going to tweet negative stuff. stuff, but the real life drama behind it is when you're in there, like watching your team every day and you're watching baseball 12 hours a day, it like consumes your life. Like a hundred percent. Like we were having some, some issues in there, and I know, like, if you want to talk about that, April, because they're, i the Blue Jays had a rough run last year. Wait, yeah, just quick, a quick note. Last year on June second, so a year ago today, <laughs> the the Blue Jays, I mean, the Angels were about, they were almost the exact same. Blue Jays are 24 and 33, 10 and a half games back. Um, they're seven and a half back of the next Thanks, Danny. Thanks. place team. I, the Angels were 25 and 32, 10 and a half back. Texas was in first, 35 and 21. Yep. So, yeah, no, it was tough. Crazy and how much a year makes. Like you guys said, like it was tough watching every game, and some of those losses were, were pretty heartbreaking. I know there was a time when the Jays went on a big winning streak and then went on a huge losing streak. So even this year when the Jays won you know, nine in a row, I was pretty cautious. But uh, this year's been a lot better. This year's been a lot better. But it, you're definitely right, Mina. Like last year, um, there's this tension. You're you're there to, to root for your team. You're in the cave, and people will always tell all of us that we had the dream job, and, and which we we did. We did have a great opportunity. But people don't actually realize even watching baseball was tough. So yeah, yeah. And I think that's. I mean, we talked about it a lot of times how we wish that the fan cave had some sort of reality segment to it in terms of like actually showing like this the psychological impact on these fans of watch <laughs> literally watching every single baseball game because it's like where else are you gonna get a group of fans watching every single baseball game together and uh, yeah so there there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that people don't get like about watching your team lose <laughs> repeatedly um, but yeah that's just how it goes but yeah I'm, I'm very happy for you right now in the Blue Jays they're Thank kicking butt hopefully good they can feeling. it's a very good feeling uh, I'm not sure Nick's very happy about the Red Sox right now but uh, from <laughs> last they won, they won a little bit <laughs> past couple the games Sox are on a seven game yeah, no, they're, they're on a seven game win streak that was a crazy Maybe, weekend though for them with the uh, the drama, oh, crazy yeah. quotes flying out of that at uh, Fenway Park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. The Blue Jays are what, 34 and 24 right now? Yeah. You got a nice cushion from the Red Sox, though. So. Yeah, that helps. We're playing them again soon, so we go Tigers. Right now the Red Sox are playing the Tigers, and then we play the Tigers, and I think there's a Red Sox series coming up, so that's going to be an important one. What's been, like, the biggest surprise uh, for you? with the Blue Jays this season? Like, is it one particular person or just the whole team in general? I think the whole team is like, you know, the whole like chemistry debate. I feel like they're finally clicking there. And I feel like our manager, John Gibbons, has finally given players the hook. You know, if you're not doing well, he sends you down to AAA, whereas last year they kind of just, you know, beat a dead horse or whatever the saying was. It's left, left them in there. It's just bleeding and, and they couldn't do anything else. So I think... Um, management has done a great job, and I think we've seen, like, guys come out of nowhere, and I think, you know, even Steve Tolson, our second baseman, kind of came out of nowhere. He was a, you know, free agent, you know, got sent to AAA to start the season. We called him up, didn't think anything of it, even though he was with Baltimore, you know, in 2012, and he's been a pleasant surprise. 
surprise. So it's been everybody like bonding. Everybody, Benny Cabrera. I think he needs a, a special shout out because with last year he had a tumor. They removed the tumor. He was very sluggish, very slow. Um, obviously, post steroids or whatever we're gonna say there. there. Is that uh, he's been great. Great. He's been great. I mean. He's our number two guy, and uh, I, I think this year the teams are moving to putting your best batter in the two-hole, and without a doubt, that's Melky Cabrera this year, even though Jose Bautista is learning how to hit oppo, which is, he's got more hits opposite field this year than he did all of last year's. You know that, the point so, that you bring up, uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry, about putting your best hitter in the two-hole, I think I talked to Ricardo about this a little bit, but um, Gabe Kapler, who's like one of the Fox Sports guys, like he mentioned this saying like, He's a big like sabermetrics like numbers guy. He was saying that the best hitter should be like the two and four are more important than the three. Um, and so like you see an example like Trout's hitting two or like Josh Josh Donaldson they put him in the two hole. Um, I think another two. Yeah, and it and it's kind of sad because the Rangers when I look at the Rangers like they're clearly not ad adapting to that <laughs> right now. Well, um, so maybe that's part of the issue that the Rangers have, but it's oh. yeah. Uh, call them up and say, listen, I know what's happening. All I, you guys, I don't have a phone know. number, but I can <laughs> DM them. But I don't, know, I don't know how much the social media manager has uh, <laughs> in terms of the lineup. But that is a very good point. And, you know, that he's been tearing it up. He's on my fantasy team, Cabrera. So I've, I've been very happy with him. <laughs> Even though my fantasy team sucks, but he's been. <laughs> <laughs> you did all right last year. Yeah, we did all right last year. I think it helps actually watching all the baseball games and <laughs> having and time that you can allocate specifically to baseball. Yeah, and you and you can see like who's doing well and who's not. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. Ridiculous. Hey, are there any like up and uh, Jays prospects? What about Jays Roman. prospects? Are there like any uh, up and coming prospects that are going to be hitting up the league soon? Uh, yeah, there's been a bunch of guys. Uh, obviously, I can't really talk about up and coming being Marcus Stroman, but he made a really debut this year, and, and uh, he just made the start yesterday, and he was unbelievable. Um, maybe the four, but without any doubt, he's just absolutely unbelievable. He's five foot nine, even though that's what his baseball reference says, but I swear he's five seven, and uh, he throws heat. So. Really odd-shaped, disproportionate sort of kind of thing. Really, really great. Also, I'll give a shout-out to Aaron Sanchez. He worries me a little bit. Um, he's our top prospect, but he worries me a little bit because he's just in double A, and he's on a slow progress, which I, I don't mind as long as we're just keeping them and nurturing them. But uh, I would like to see a little more development there. Nice. Well, if you if you guys don't know, April runs Jay's prospects. Or were you – did you – did you uh, create it? Yeah, I did. Oh. I uh, created it a few years ago, um, and I now found it. And now we've got beat writers in New Hampshire, where our double nice. A team, and Lansing, where our single A team is. The thing is, is that those guys are way have way more time than I do, or maybe I'm spending too much time at the Rogers Center. But uh, they're great. So I'm just right now. I'm just editing, and they're writing. So uh, you know, check it out if you want. But uh, just a lot of prospect talk for the Blue Jays. Yeah, so she knows everything about the prospects uh, up in Florida, the Blue Jays. So if you have any questions, make sure to tweet at her, at AllieCat17. You probably already follow her. <laughs> yeah. But Wait, don't Abra. Be... <laughs> yeah. Abra, I got a question. Okay. I'm Jed Hoyer of the Cubs, and I'm calling you. I'm saying I want to trade you Jeff Samarja. you got to give me Drew Hutchinson and Marcus Stroman. Not happening. What do you got? Not happening? No, I, I definitely want Jeff Smarja. I want him. I've said it even before the season, and I think he would do well in the AL East. And I was probably the only person that, before the season, I was ready to give up whatever it took. Um, but after Marcus Stroman's last game, and Drew Hutch has just been dominating. I mean, he's off and on. I guess Mina got the, the worst part of it against Darvish. But... Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> but uh, he's off and on. So when he's on, he's absolutely unstoppable. Um, but I, I could probably do a, you know, I'll give you Kevin Pillar. You guys met him in the cave. 
He's uh he's batting over 300. He's a great outfield arm. I know. He's but great. I need arms. So Kevin Pillar and like Mitch Nay or or Daniel Norris or something will might I need, get it done. I need arms though. I have a bunch of I have a bunch of outfield and infield prospects. What about Drew Hutchinson, Aaron Sanchez? I can't I can't give you like two top guys. <laughs> I'll give you five of them. I'll give you one of them. Come on, Danny. Alright. All right. <laughs> Deal off. I want more I want more pitching prospects. <laughs> oh man. So April, what now that it's been well it's been less than a year, I guess, since we left the cave. Do you have any regrets or do you have any things that you terribly miss about it or things that you don't miss at all? You love being at baseball games. Yeah, um, no. Being able to go to the games is always nice. Um, that's been a lot of fun. But uh, I think the whole like aspect, I think like when we were living in the cave, like we thought earlier, there was a little bit of stress, a little bit of chaos. We were running on no sleep. We were just doing it every day, and yeah. basically wasn't able to take everything in while we were there. You know what I mean? Um, you look back on it now, you know, much. Months later, and you go, "What the heck did I just do?" <laughs> or you see the cast this year, and you're like, "Man, I wish I was doing that." A lot of fun, and then you get in that mindset, or you know, someone will tell me like, "Yeah, you had a great time," but when you were there, remember there was a few moments where you were stressed out or oh, busy. Not that, not that it was a bad right. thing or anything, but uh, uh, so there's parts that I really miss. I miss being, being able to, you know, sit on a couch with y'all and just watch baseball and enjoy it. But uh, at the same time, I enjoy being back in Toronto um, with my Celsius weather and uh, not still haven't figured out Fahrenheit, so even though I was there for that long, but uh, and eating my Smarties, so I was gonna have a buff Smarties here, but I don't, so I apologize about that. But uh, there's definitely things like, like I said, it was one of those opportunities that we'll probably never be able to experience ever again. But uh, I've enjoyed having being able to walk around Rogers Center, have a few people come up to me and ask for photos and stuff. That's been uh, an interesting experience. Uh, uh, I was actually just in my a boyfriend tweet. doesn't like very much, but oh, I, I bet I'm sure. I was gonna read you a tweet from uh, <laughs> Craig Ch- at Craig R W C. Oh, he it's goes, Craig. Craig, what is life like now as a celebrity fan after returning from the? Ah. Oh, See, Craig. that's Craig's a really good joke. Craig is a good friend of mine, and uh, yeah. he constantly likes to like poke at me and say that I'm a celebrity, a local celebrity. So well, you um, are. You, got, yeah, Mina, you've been sure. you've been telling me that for a while now too, but uh, I've okay. only signed two autographs since I've been back. So I'll look, 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 okay. look. <laughs> like, wow. like we've oh, signed only two autographs. <laughs> <My God. laughs> okay, okay. Wait a second. While we were at the cave last year, right? Um, I think I got a total of like maybe five to seven people throughout the whole season that like I didn't know come to the cave and be like, oh, where's Mina? It's like, oh, that's cool. Rangers fans, right? I think April got five to seven people a week, like every week. There were Blue Jays, Blue Jays fans would come by, knock on the window specifically for April, and like not even just for the fan cave, but just to see April, mm-hmm. like. So that's you are a local celebrity. If you if you want to argue me on that, I'll, I'll just say that from last She's year. She's a national treasure. That's what she is. I've I've just been pretty lucky. I think that I got on Twitter early, made a presence, made a brand, and for some reason people are I think I think people are able to connect to a person's individual emotions versus a brand's emotions. So that's why when companies tweet something, you may not have an instant reaction to it. But if your friend tweeted it, then you're like, okay, that's actually cool. I'll retweet that or I'll, I'll, I'll like that. I think that's cool. Yeah. So I think that's what's happening. With you, whereas, you know, I'm just an individual who has that passion that so people are able to relate to it versus the Blue Jays tweeting something. And, like, you know, there's times where I'll tweet the exact same thing and get more interaction, but that's because I've developed the brand as a fan. And that's been good and bad for, for me, obviously. Unlike most of you, I'm not working in baseball, but uh, I'm still able to carry on that passion. That was a very profound. Uh, that was like written down. <laughs> I, that was a solid answer. I, I'm April. Just for that one. 
April, has anyone told you you put the PR in April? Because that was a very <laughs> well. Dude, that's a solid joke. Yeah, solid answer, solid that's, joke. Hey, that's her tagline. She puts the PR in April. Um, I know it because she brands herself so well, like she said. Um, very, very uh, good job answering that. Also, we had, so we tweeted out like, hey, do you guys have any questions for us? We have a podcast. And all the answers came back for questions for you pretty much. Um, yeah, so pretty much. I wanted to throw out a couple of questions uh, just for fun, okay. and our very own former dwellers, Aaron Roberts and Marcus, chimed in, and uh, they asked, do you still have the big Edwin head, and if so, have you been running around with it crazy lately, with all his home runs? <laughs> I couldn't get it back to Canada. Oh, oh no. You couldn't what? send it? No, they couldn't. But you, like, customs said no. <laughs> customs must have said no. Unfortunately, uh, on the on the other side of that, uh, I still go crazy on every Edwin home run. Yeah. Um, I do the wing. I do the the Ed wing. You know, it's 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 a full thing now. Whether the Blue Jays started it or we started yeah. it or whatever. Yeah. I did know that the fan cave dwellers of this year sent out a video recently of them Ed winging. Oh really? Oh, I didn't and get a chance to watch the video. it out. It's it's cool. It's cool, but I should let you guys know. I responded by tweeting out our video because oh, because you are the Blue Jays rep. You know what? We got it all going. So they did a great job, but uh, I think I think we had winged the best. Have you have you talked to anyone from the fan cave this year? This is for everyone. A question for everyone. Uh, let's start with April. Um, I I mean, there's little comments here and there on Instagram and Twitter, um, but we ha I haven't had a full out conversation with any of them. A lot of it's like, yeah, things are great, or you know, us fan cave dwellers need to stick together. But there's a few really awesome individuals there. There's a few I really couldn't tell you much as their name or their team. So, oh, what about you guys? Danny. Yeah, I mean, same with April. I just a little bit comment here or there on Twitter. Um, but no, I haven't like have a conversation with anybody. Yeah, Mina. Uh, same, same with everyone else. I think the main issue I have is that I haven't been on social media so much. Like, I'm on social all the time for my work. That my personal social is like really dead. So I don't really see what they're doing as much. Um, I haven't been keeping up with the fan cave as much either, which is a bummer. And I don't have cable. I don't have it either. Uh, so sure. I can't I can't watch off the bat and stuff like that. It's ironic because I work in cable television, but um, that that's, a di- that's a different issue. But yeah, I haven't really been keeping up with the cave as much, um, which is a bummer. But they look like they're having fun. But they do, and they're allowed to take pictures. Yeah, with the with the players and stuff, right? Players, yeah. they're like told to. I'm like, I want a you know, selfie and everything, but that's okay. I'm yeah, just... we, uh, we had to be professional in the cave. Um, I guess they don't want us to be like fanatics and trying to get bother players with pictures and stuff. I guess it's okay now, but I don't know. I ran into Jose. Ricardo? Be- Sorry, Ricardo wanted oh, to say Oh, no. Wait, wait. Uh... <laughs> You started that with, I ran into Jose Bautista. You're like, oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't no, no, yeah. Okay, let's, who cares about me? Let's, let's, mm-hmm. You ran into Jose Bautista. Oh, I just can't be like, you were in a supermarket, and you were grabbing, like, bread, and <laughs> grabbing bread at the same time. You're like, oh, my God, Jose. It's so weird. That's not how it happened, but... Uh, uh, how did that happen, then? Okay. I, because I'm a season ticket holder, I got to watch batting practice on the field. So I was watching batting practice, and sometimes the players come by and talk to the people that are watching batting practice. So I'm standing there, and Batista is kind of like looking at me as if, if he might know who I am, but I'm not going to say anything because I don't think he knows who I am because a few times he came, he was really busy, and I tried to start a conversation, but for some reason, you know, my, my words wouldn't come out. So like, hey, how are you? And that was about it. Um, but he comes up to me, and he goes, hey, April. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know my name and he goes thanks so much for all the oh, tweets yeah. and I can't believe you're not in the fan cave anymore and he goes where what is everybody doing as if he knew everybody so what? I told him all about you guys and uh, 
he uh, he said that he hasn't had a chance to watch the fan cave this year either. So Mina, we're not alone. So all right. So we're we're pretty much just as busy as Jose Bautista then. Is that what you're <laughs> to say? We're on that same level. Okay. So sorry, Ricardo. Back to you. <laughs> oh no, no. I mean, I was going to tell the story about how uh, one time Mike Trout and I went and grabbed pizza. We hung out. <laughs> uh, no, for the fan cave guy. You know, I've only I've only talked to Keith, the Yankees fan. He's a pretty cool dude. Um, but just the other ones, I think I tweeted like a couple of things here and there, and I didn't really. I got a generic response, so I just didn't really care too much, I guess. Um, but yeah, Keith is really the only one I follow, um, and I haven't followed the cave. I mean, as much as you guys, like last year, just as I was behind the scenes and stuff. But I still talk to, aside from the dwellers, I talk to everybody else, I mean, maybe right. once a week. I try to. Yeah. I was almost first comment on Instagram for a fan cave picture. <laughs> I, I was three that. seconds off. But that's how so I think that's, that's, most, that's the most interaction I've had in the cave this year. Yeah, so that's how you're trying to <laughs> It was like on a Saturday. <laughs> and then people get so upset when you do it. It's hilarious. <laughs> Wait, I, let me see if I got it. You, so. were, you said you were first, but you were second, right? I think I saw that. Yeah. This guy, go, this guy goes Manny. And then I go first, and then I go, damn it. All the response all Is that backwards on your guys' screen? Is it backwards on my screen? No, that's good. No, that's uh, good. I'm still learning this. No, that's good. <laughs> that's the most that's the most uh, interaction I've had with kids this year, I think. Yeah, I guess it's tough too because we're not in New York. Like you were saying, uh, Ricardo, you were you were actually with the fan game last year, so you. Um, caught up with us, but since we're like not in New York, we can't like go visit them. We can't really like, you know, actually create some sort of friendship. <laughs> or really. yeah. I, I was, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. Stop cutting Rico off. Obviously, I must not like him. So no, go ahead. Sorry. No, I wasn't even born. I was gonna. <laughs> I I do. I do like you. Uh, Mina's laughing at me, but uh, <laughs> sorry. But, um. No, but I was going to say, uh, just agree with Mina. Was like, because we're not in New York, obviously we don't have that interaction, but I'm trying to actually head to New York. Is where oh. I was at. I'm trying to help arrange an Expos Nation trip to the city field um, in July. So we're trying to get a bunch of Expos fans just to show the city of Montreal that there's wow. still Expos fans out there. So we're trying to arrange a pretty big, uh, pretty big trip there to New York. So I'll see what I can do and Dude, contact awesome. the fan camp there too but who knows what, when are you trying to go I think it's July 7th don't quote me on that but it's when the Marlins are in town in at City Field against the Mets okay so it's gonna be a good time yeah that's, that's pretty cool thanks sorry Ricardo yeah, real quick, yeah. uh, it's funny because like even if you I don't care about the cutting off thing it's just like you keep cutting me off with like cooler <laughs> things like now <laughs> I don't know how the hell do I follow that up like I, I can't I, I really. Yeah, I was friends with you guys last year. I was in New York. <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, I was told not to talk to you guys, and, but I did because you guys were cool. So there's that. Oh, That's my, that was my story. Oh, uh, Ricardo. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, all right, man. What, do you got, what else do you got going on today? Uh, actually, there's a, an event on the Blue Jays off days called Pitch Talks. And they get a bunch of like industry leaders in baseball here to have start conversations and have social media discussions at a local brewery uh, here in Toronto. So one of my friends, uh, Alexis, she works for the Blue Jays in uh, up in the scoreboard area. She's also a big writer for the Canadian. Like ba- literally, literally in the scoreboard area, or <laughs> no? She does a lot more technical things than that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> for that but um, yeah so she's actually one of the speakers today as well as uh, a couple of the beat writers here in Toronto so I'm going to go check that out and uh, yeah there's been a great cast so far uh, I'm waiting for my invite I'll tell you that so there you go yeah to, to speak yeah I'm just, uh, who knows? I bet you there, that's probably gonna happen soon <laughs> well you guys can come to Toronto and and listen to me speak I'll act well, we'll do a Google Hangout I'll just Bring the webcam. No, back. I mean if you can fly, if you can get Jose to fly us out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're friends with Jose. He tweeted us. 
<laughs> All right, April. Well, thanks so much. Really appreciate it, uh, you coming on this and talking with us. Um, enjoy your pitch talk and all that stuff. Yeah. Thanks. Do you it's have great. any? Do you have any last uh, second shout out to your fans that are watching this or anything you want <laughs> to wrap this up? If you want to. <laughs> sure. I mean, uh, well, thanks for everyone for listening. Thanks for having me here. And uh, let's go Blue Jays. We're 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 in first place right now, and let's keep it that way. Beat those Yankees. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, please beat the Yankees. <laughs> Bye guys, and thanks so much. No problem. Good seeing you, April. Later. See ya. Bye. Wow, April Whiteman. So, yeah. Calling from Canada. No, it's Jose Batista. How how awesome is that to run? She. Oh, you know. Yeah, she's like, yeah, oh, yes, I ran into Jose, and she was like, hey, April, or he was like, hey, April, and, like, like, he knows her. How the hell am I supposed to follow that up? Like, she cuts me off, oh, by the way, I met Jose. Oh, no, but Ricardo, go on with you, what you're talking about. (laughs) Whatever store you had just went out the window. You just got to, like, Like, what do I have? You got to be like, oh, I forgot. Yeah, I can't top that at all. There's no way. I I forgot what I was going to say, so, yeah, next next topic, what do we got? (laughs) That's what you got to do. Oh, man. Fun oh, stuff, geez. but that, uh, that was sad. <sighs> Anyways, what's what's next on the list? Are we gonna talk about the AOS? AOS A's are gonna lose second half of the season. They're hot now. The uh, Rangers. I will say, I guess, a segue from AOS to the All Star Game. I just started voting for All Star Game today because um, I've been trying to hold it off, you know, because I don't believe in the whole vote in April when the season just started, kind of thing. And I was looking through the ballot and. I noticed for two positions, the Rangers, like the Ranger player, has no stats next to them because they, because they're injured. Like they haven't played the whole season, uh, and uh, that pretty much sums up the Rangers in the ALS. Is what I was trying to say for the segue. <laughs> it was, it was, probably finish like a fourth in voting or something. It's gonna be weird. It was Profar at second base and then Soto at catcher, and it just had blank. Stats next to them. Oh my gosh! Danny, oh, it's vote? so sad. Vote or no? Did I did I vote for them? Oh no, Danny. Does Danny oh, vote? I was like, did I vote? I for haven't them? I haven't voted at all now. Not yet. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I've I vote at all. I just feel like my 25 or 35 votes aren't gonna do much. It's yeah. Just, well, but if you if everyone thinks like that, then. But I but I know <laughs> like not everyone's gonna think like that. Like, honest, though, gets... I always thought that, like, little, little MLB plug, little behind-the-scenes plug, um, I always thought that it was, like, rigged. Like, oh, they just get their players that they want in the game or whatever. They don't. That didn't happen last year. Remember, uh, I'll, I'll say we had a MLB person come down and say that they really wanted Puig in the game, and um, we needed to make that happen, and he ended up not getting in the game. Yeah, so, I think... I think the way they do All-Star Game versus the face of MLB is very different because <laughs> we all know the face of MLB did not turn out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, being on the PR side of things, like it's actually legit voting. Like, if you don't vote, that player yeah. doesn't go in or will go in. And uh, it's, fun. it's funny seeing those numbers. I mean, the funniest story from the All-Star Game last year was the home run derby fiasco. I don't know. I sh- uh, yeah. don't even know. If it, this is one of those, I'm going to tell you a secret, but I can't. Kind of things the people who are listening. Well, everybody kind of knows that there wasn't a fourth player, a fourth home run uh, participant for the well, AL. The I participant was supposed yeah. to be like I don't know I don't I don't want them to get all mad that I'm saying this stuff, but yeah. Part- so, but I mean, people know there was a reason why there wasn't a fourth. They just yeah. don't know why. But generally, there there was an issue around that. Yeah. It's very vague, but there was every, I think people know that. The public knows that there was some kind of issue why there wasn't a fourth person at that announcement. <laughs> oh, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know. What, there's no fourth. Well, who do you guys want to go to the Oscar game? Like, who do you think, uh, aside from the obvious ones like Trout and all them? Like, who do you um, think? I really want Nolan Arenado to go, but since he's injured. I don't know what his status is, but... He's out uh, until either, like, the All-Star game or right after the All-Star game. Yeah, so he probably won't even play anyways if he made it, but probably a lot of the Rockies players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they've been tearing it up. Yeah. They've been, I mean, it's, it's funny seeing, like, Charlie uh, Blackman in the beginning of the season. Yeah. 
They're like, and oh, then, he's a rock. He's not going to do anything. And then he's still killing it. Like, it's all, it's June. And he's yeah, it. and like, obviously, Troy, like, Tulowitzki is like awesome. So he'll probably get in. Um, I don't know who else. Who else did I vote for? Danny, do you have any like any underdogs? Um, I mean, I don't know. It's hard not to be a homer for the Angels, you know. But um, if I had to pick somebody to, like an underdog wise, I mean, is Mark Burley even getting votes? The guy's got like ten wins. You don't um, vote for pitchers, dog. Yeah, you don't vote for pitchers. Dog. Oh, I think I see, think I, that's how often I vote. I can't even tell you that. <laughs> That's how often I vote. Uh, Were you in the fan game last year when we did this? <laughs> I probably pushed pitchers and people I just didn't say anything. Like, this kid's dumb. Uh, probably like, you got to vote for Weaver, guys. <laughs> people were like, vote for uh, Weaver. Vote for Weaver. Hashtag vote for Weaver. I probably did it, and I don't even I don't remember. I do agree. Burley should make it, though. Um, yeah, I think he makes it in. Not, I, mean, get in. I mean, if it's not like a vote thing, then yeah, we'll get it in. Um, uh, I want to see... Uh, is it George Springer from the Astros? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, going to line it up. He had, like, what, seven consecutive home runs or something like that? Like, For him, well... Seven games. Seven games, seven home runs. Is Jose Abreu going to be ready for... Oh, I'd have to put Abreu in there. Okay, so I would rather put Abreu in than Springer at this point. Because I think Springer's kind of like the Puig of last year, where he came up... Um, like, you know how last year Puy goes, like, there's not enough sample size or whatever. And so he mm-hmm. ended up not making it. He's clearly going to make it this year. Um, but I think Springer might be kind of that same situation where maybe people don't know enough about him. Like, he came up a little bit too late. I don't know, though. He I came in, like, mid-May, maybe early May. Because when did Puy come in? About the same time. Late May. Or he came at the same time? But Springer's, Springer's yeah, not making as big of headlines as Puig was last year, I think. Puig was, like, everyone, like, had Puig mania. Like, it was crazy. And, yeah, he, still but, didn't, and he still didn't make it. <laughs> I think the thing that helped Puig was the fact that he was on the Dodgers and George Springer's on the Astros, and no one really thinks sure. the Astros are going to do much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would be yeah. great. It would be cool to see him. Um, maybe even in a home run derby. It would be fun to put him in, like, or a Bray in there, like a rookie... Uh, just like hit bombs. See. I would yeah. love to see uh, John Carlos Stanton and Jose Abreu in the home run derby. Yeah, yeah. John Carlos Stanton's gotta be in it. He's just been awesome. He's ripped. I mean. Yeah, he's enormous. That guy's huge. But have you seen that picture of uh, Skips like putting a mic on him? No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So for those listening, uh, Skips is Sean Kippen. He was in the fan cave with my group in 2012. Braves fan, and he works for uh, MLB.com. Oh, there's this picture of him. It's my favorite picture. Uh, he's like maybe five, seven, five, eight, and uh, he's trying to put like a lapel mic on Stanton, and he just like towers over Sean. <laughs> the face that Sean has is like whoever t- took the screenshot of it is the funniest thing ever. Yeah. I gotta find it and tweet it out because it's great. Yeah, we got we gotta get that on here. I'm supposed to get where's, that. Uh, where's Jose Altuve at in the voting? He should be in there. I don't know. I feel like Greg should look this up. You guys you think I, he's not going to beat Cano in terms of no. fan voting, though. And uh, even yeah, even Ian should. Kinsler, like he's been doing great with Detroit. Uh, just hard to say. But... Hosmer, Hosmer's pretty good this year. I should have been a lot more prepared when. I... Hosmer, I mean Miggy, Miggy's going to win that. Yeah. Hands down. Um, Are we talking about like who's going to get in as a starter? Yeah, I guess for the fan voting. Easy ones to figure that thing. I want, I do want Edwin for DH, but mm-hmm. I don't know who's who's winning in DH for voting. I haven't seen the update. Right, so right now, uh, winning right now in DH is uh, Nelson Cruz. Uh, of course. With, uh, he David didn't, Ortiz, he didn't mind that too. Ortiz is down by like over a hundred thousand votes. Um, so those are those two spots. Catcher is Matt Weeters and Brian McCann. Weeters is, is like out. The catch catchers are kind of weak. I feel. Yeah, there's there. I mean, there hasn't been like an all, aside from Yachty, and maybe a couple of Nano. There, there really hasn't been like a insane catcher lately. Yeah, I think NL definitely has stronger catchers. Um, yeah, AL's kind of. AL's kind of oh, weak. When it comes to yeah, even McCann Unless like. Hank Conger. Hank Conger. Yeah. <laughs> Bowden Hancock. 
Vote Hank Hunger. All right, here we go. First base is uh, Miguel Cabrera. I think he's pretty much got it. Uh, he's winning like 962,000 votes. Yeah, there's no way he's not. Like 300,000. Um, second base, Robinson Cano. Third base, Josh Donaldson. Makes I mean, sense. Yeah. Uh, shortstop, Derek Jeter. Makes sense. Uh, how, I haven't even seen his stats. Is he even doing that great? He's probably like... Not Jeter. really. If this been like Classic Jeter year. It's his last year. Yeah, it's his last yeah. year. It, see, this is one of those things... I mean, do you get upset when something like... Like with Chipper? Like when Chipper made the All-Star team, and I don't think he had the stats to get in? Does that make you upset that they made yes. Jeter? Yes and no. I mean, part of it's like... Well, part of it, Jeter's not doing terribly, like, really bad. If he was, like, doing horribly and then he got called up, then it's kind of like, uh, in starting. But also, since this is last year, it's like a fan thing. I get it. Like, I was super stoked to see him uh, when he came to Angel Stadium, like, a month ago. And yeah, that's so, awesome. so, yeah, I think, I think as a, from a fan point of view, like, I don't, I don't really care, like, he deserves it. He's hitting 273 right now. Those are some all-star numbers. With five doubles. Some pretty yeah. solid numbers right there. I think, like, I mean, a classic GDA, I think. Alexi Ramirez, actually, from the White Sox, is doing pretty well for shortstop. Um, oh, yeah, he is. So he's I a, hope... He's actually second on the list. He's uh, two, about 2,000. Yeah, so... He'll, I think he'll definitely make the team, but he won't start because obviously Jeter just has a lot more fan power. Yeah. Well, look at this. This is pretty interesting. Outfield. Uh, so Mike Trout leads, but barely. He leads uh, 1.36, and Jose Bautista is 1.35. Wow. That's pretty funny. Funny in a non-funny way? Yeah, because Trout should be way ahead of him. <laughs> Oh, when April's on here, I meant I meant to tell. I saw a stat today. Uh, Jose Bautista has reached base in all but two games, 56 out of 58. That's insane. Which is pretty insane. That's cool. Yeah, he's been doing really well. Yeah, it'll be a tight race. Yeah, it should be fun. But... Wait, excited for it. Did you see the Snoopy stuff they came out with? The peanut. Uh... Yeah, it's so awesome. <laughs> oh my god, I lost my mind. It was awesome. Huh? I have not seen that. Oh, dude, you gotta get on it. There's like Snoopy with like a baseball. There's, yeah, uh, they're awesome. Lioness with like his little blanket and stuff. That statue's over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pretty cool. Okay. I wanna go. I'll Google it. Yeah, Google it. Um, what's next? Fantasy advice? Fantasy advice. We don't have any advice. Actually, somebody asked asked this on on Twitter.com. About Gregory Polanco. Yeah, here we go. Chris Cass, at C-A-double-S. He goes, uh, should I drop Jose Fernandez or keep him for next year? Uh, Keeperly? Yeah. Keep him. Yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd keep him. I, I feel mean, like it's just a spot on the DL, just like, whatever. You can play around a DL. What do you think, Mina? Keep him? Yeah, probably. I mean, he's one of the best young pitchers. I would, I would keep him. Yeah, I'd keep him. <laughs> so whoever you are, yeah, keep him. But, yeah, uh, but what do we know? We're last in our fantasy league. But, but um, hey, yeah, I am not. You were talking to. I'm saying yes on. I'm in last. I'm a very terrible fantasy player. Do we yeah. have any other? Do we have any mailbag questions? Because I mean, most of them were from for April. <laughs> Actually, we got a couple. I saw. Yeah, I saw. Go to my account. Uh. There's a guy in our league, Andrew, the re- at the real Andrew V. Mm-hmm. He actually asked us a pretty, it's a pretty solid question, I thought. Uh, he goes, uh, do you think the best starting nine under 25 years old will be the best starting nine over 30 years old? Who's on your roster? Like if it was just, if it was an all-star game? Yeah, like if you took the a nine one-off? best players that are under 30. Actually, under yeah, under 25. So everyone between 25 and 30 is not, we can't count them in anything, right? 
Yeah, that's like that's a pretty like tough question, I think. Ah. So yeah. who, who? First off, you got to distinguish who's the top nine. Yeah, who's top nine under twenty five? That's. So, I mean, I would just say. Under twenty five, under twenty five is my gut, just out of like instincts. Yeah. Um, I think if you just get Chris Sale in there pitching, he's been freaking awesome since coming back from the DL. Yeah, I really. He just he just had like a complete game like recently too. Uh, he is twenty five. Just have I'm him. Sure yeah, just have him pitch and they'll win the game. And Trout will hit a home run and they'll hit a they'll win the game. Just pitch it. We're gonna clone Trout. That's my analysis. Uh, just have Chris Sale pitch a complete game and have Trout hit a home run. Wait, you said Chris Sale is uh, 25? Yeah, he is 25. Oh, so he's eligible. I'm not sure if they count. It's under under 25, right? (sighs) Okay, well, Jose Fernandez, he'll he'll come back (laughs) and pitch a complete game. We're going to set up this game when uh, Jose Fernandez is back. Yeah. He's going to pitch a perfect game. And then Trout will hit a home run. Trout will hit a home run. I typed in Jose Fernandez to find out his age. <clears throat> and there is no month or day. It's just a year. Well, that's weird. Isn't that bizarre? Oh, no, here we go. Google, Google, Google added it again. Google didn't, didn't pop it up, but Wikipedia did. July 31. He's 21. Weird. 21. Um, I don't even know who would be the starting pitcher for above 30. Rick Burley? Um, I see. Mark Moore. Burley. Um, who else? Yeah, this is hard to. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'd probably go Cliff Lee. Weaver? Weaver or Lee? I can't put Cliff Lee. I'd rather. I think I'd rather put Burley over Weaver at this point. How's Burley? Yeah, I'd put Burley. The way he, the season's going right now. Yeah, if the game were to be played like during All Star Week or something. Um, I'd probably put him Burley, but probably Cliff Lee first. You know what, Andrew? Give us a, a date when this game's going to be going on, and then we'll have a better <laughs> answer for you. Yeah, that'll be... We'll have to... Uh, I, would like, actually, I would like it when Adley like, drop a lineup. That's a, tough, that's a tough question. I have to yeah, drop the lineup and look at, like... Bullpen. we got to look at... I mean, 25 would be kind of tough to fill out a roster. Like It's, it's true. But th- then again, like thirty, like you're, you're in your prime. What, like twenty six to twenty nine? <laughs> that's it. That's Maybe why it's a good question. Your, your you can't pick any of those guys that are like twenty or above. Yeah. Or above. So let's yeah. do this. So next week's episode, we'll go back and we'll actually make this segment for next week's uh, podcast. Yeah, we'll actually yeah. put the nine. We'll pick our nine for both teams and then uh, debate. That's yeah. Tough. That's a tough one. That's tough. Well, thank you, everyone, who's lasted this long with us. I don't know how... We'll probably have to cut some of that technical difficulty parts. Yeah. Oh, that's definitely going to get cut. I just got to figure out how we're going to do that. We got to yeah. cut when April's... Yeah. Turn yeah. There's a lot of stuff we need to cut. But thank you, guys. Um, hopefully this was entertaining. Hopefully... Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, think of better topics. Yeah. We're always improving. It'll get yeah. better next week. Yeah, this is our first, so cut us a break. And thank you to April for joining us. Hopefully we can get someone uh, next week. We can just keep having guests and not have any issues. <laughs> yeah, we're to have random guests. Yeah. yeah, we'll try to get some players in here. Um, we'll get some, uh, like, we'll have more time to field questions, too. Yeah. Today was just like a couple hours, and then maybe yesterday, but um, yeah. Yeah. So basically, we're just making a lot of excuses. But next, <laughs> let's next. Do, let's do this. Let's do a call to. This is what we call a call to action. Let's do uh, one topic for next week. Will be walk up music. What would you choose as your walk up music? How's that? For That's us or for? Well, yeah. For and, yeah. Oh, I I had a I had a good question too. I forgot. I was gonna. I was gonna tweet it to you, but I forgot. I was like, I'll just bring it up in the thing. Totally forgot about it. Um, would you rather have a first pitch that's terrible and everybody remembers it, or would you rather have just a run-of-the-mill classic 
whatever pitch and nobody remembers it. The only person remembers it is you. We'll save that for next week. That's a good question. Damn, I don't know. That's tough. I got to think about that one. Yeah. I forgot to freaking leave that. But next week, (laughs) coming at you. Coming at you strong. Next, I'm excited for next week's episode now. Now that we know what the hell we're doing, this is great. All right. Well, thanks again, guys. Thanks again. Tweet us at the Wonder Bat. And we'll see you next week. Answer closing music. (laughs) 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 (laughs)